Good evening. The sinister threat of World War III hangs over Europe. And now President Biden is on the ground in Brussels as the NATO alliance tries to stop Vladimir Putin and put an end to the Russian dictator's onslaught against Ukraine. The leader of the free world set to sit down with European allies tomorrow for an urgent and high-stakes talk to build a unified front against Russia. New today, the U.S. government is officially accusing Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. The world is watched in horror as the Russian war machine has flattened cities and bombed civilian targets, including this maternity ward filled with pregnant women and children in the city of Mariupol. Today, President Biden warned a possible chemical attack by the Russians is a real threat. New drone video of Mariupol shows a smoking apocalyptic hellscape as Russia relentlessly pummels that city to dust. The Pentagon has warned us the Russians are stalled, frustrated, and bombarding cities they have not been able to capture. Also new tonight, a senior Pentagon official says a Ukrainian counteroffensive has successfully pushed the Russian forces back even further away from Kyiv. The Russians were about 20 miles east of the capital. Now, now they're about 35 miles out. And there's a staggering new assessment of Russian losses during the invasion. NATO now estimates up to 15,000 Russian troops have died in a single month since Putin launched the attack. That's about how many soldiers the Soviet Union lost in its disastrous war in Afghanistan. And that was over 10 years. NATO also estimates up to 40,000 Russian troops are wounded, captured, or just missing. Reporting tonight from NBC's Cal Perry in Lviv, first, CNBC's senior White House correspondent Kayla Tausche traveling with the president and live for us in Brussels. Kayla. Shep, it's the highest stakes trip of Biden's presidency with the world on edge over Russia's war in Ukraine and allies expected to show renewed solidarity and a new wave of actions to punish Vladimir Putin, who shows no signs of backing down. Those actions will include sanctions on a widening list of Russian oligarchs and lawmakers, firmer plans for Europe to stop buying Russian natural gas and more military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the U.S. would be consulting allies on whether to remove Russia from the G20 group of the largest economies, saying today, quote, we don't believe it can be business as usual with Russia in international institutions. For Ukraine, membership in NATO is off the table. Tomorrow, President Zelensky will address the group virtually, pleading yet again for a no-fly zone. It's a critical moment of coordination for the transatlantic alliance facing its first major test in the post-Soviet era. How to respond to a war on its doorstep, how much military might to build up for the future, with four new battle groups deploying to Eastern Europe, and the next phase of the war in question. Any use of nuclear weapons will fundamentally change the nature of the conflict. And Russia must understand that a nuclear war should never be fought and, never, and they can never win a nuclear war. There's also the question of how NATO would respond if Russia were to use chemical weapons. Today, the president of Lithuania called that a red line, something other leaders have been reluctant to do. Chef? Kayla, there's still the risk of China coming to the aid of Russia. What is NATO's position on Beijing? Well, Shep, while there's no evidence yet that China has provided material support to Russia, both NATO and the White House say that could change in an instant. NATO Secretary General today said China has already provided political support to Moscow by spreading blatant lies and misinformation. Shep? Kayla Tausche, thank you.